my guest died from a medical mistake, visited heaven, and was sent back with an urgent message. Next. Holy Spirit, you're our most important guest. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you're already here. Thank you. This is your platform. Take over. Rabbi Felix Halpern has an amazing Jewish legacy from his parents. Felix, tell us about that. I, I think it's terrific. <laughs> uh, my journey uh, to my Judaism was uh, pretty much like the Lord took the Israelites to the Promised Land, the long way. And um, it began, of course, uh, it comes from one side is Orthodox Judaism, uh, but the other side is rooted in Nazi resistance. Uh, my father was raised in an Orthodox Jewish home. My grandfather was an Orthodox rabbi in Germany. Uh, my father was the only one that escaped. The rest were killed, went to the camps and were killed. And my father made it uh, through the transport that the nations, uh, the UK and different nations were transporting Jewish children out of Germany into Europe. And my father went into the Dutch underground to be hidden there in safety. Just happened to be uh, my maternal grandparents who were resistance fighters, who were underground uh, leaders and fighting the resistance of the Nazis. And so in that time, my father um, saw the, the sacrifices of the Dutch Christians. And that had such a tremendous impact on him that brought him to the decision to receive Yeshua. Um, however, at that particular time, there was no understanding like we have today, number one of Messianic Judaism. It was in its infant stages. Um, many people believed like there are replacement theology and different things uh, that a Jewish person, when they receive Jesus, Yeshua is no longer Jewish. And that's what he was indoctrinated into. And that's what you were indoctrinated into. I was, I was indoctrinated into, into that. I was, uh, he did everything he could to hide his Judaism. You, to, were, you were raised Christian, yet was raised, there was something lacking. In 1970, you're driving your car and you call out to God. What happened? I was working one morning and I was going out on the road and I had reached my ultimate desperation. I met my beautiful wife. She was strongly rooted in Judaism. The conflict began to emerge. Mm. It was love at first sight. <laughs> you know, we met and six months later we were married and we've been married now for 47 years. But um, I was beginning to be stirred by that. And I remember there's a place in New Jersey called the Rambapo Reservation. And I pulled over into the car and I cried out to the Lord and I asked Yeshua Jesus to come into my life and to make my life whole. And when I opened my eyes, it was like a curtain, like this set, a curtain drew and I saw light and I saw everything different. Um, I went home that day and my wife immediately knew the difference. I was no longer this religious rigid guy. Uh, it was a tr it was a problem. I was raised religious, and there's and there's a rigidity to a religious did you, spirit. Did you f feel anything or see anything when this presence? Came I felt on the you. power of God. I felt the power of Yeshua enter my life. I felt the spirit of God in my in my car. I, that curtain drew, and life was different. I, there was a different scenery before me, and and I went home that day. And because my whole character changed and my wife knew, whoa, something's changed. She no longer was seeing this guy who through religious eyes, rather fanatical, quite frankly, I was. Un it, was un it was unrelenting. It was, really, it was really bad. And God just changed everything. And I loved her for who she was. I became a totally different person. Six months later, she had received the Lord because she saw the absolute transformation in my life. Not only did she receive the Lord, yeah. but you had to unlearn what is called replacement theology, that the Jew or Israel has been replaced by the church. Well, God doesn't change, so I'll give you one guess who made the changing. But the truth of the matter is that as life went on in 2000, 19, he went to the doctor 
and there was a medical mistake and he died. Now, I've never died and most of us have never died. I want to know what that dying process was like. Uh, you saw an angel. What, what happened? The process to death was terrible. My body was filled with in a toxic storm from a misdiagnosis. Um, I consumed seven and a half months of medication in 29 days. Oh. The doctor misdiagnosed me. And, and quite frankly, when I was came back and I was really wanted to share my story with everyone, I called the pharmacy and uh, the pharmacy um, immediately changed my medical records because they wanted to make make it look um, like they did made no, made no error, right? Um, but the journey to, to death was was painful. And that one Friday night, it was uh, the whole month, the culmination of that month. I was in absolute pain. My body was on fire. Um, my wife, I say this all the time because I have to say it, because my wife has finally forgiven me for not telling her. I never wanted her to worry. I just mm. didn't want her to worry. And that night, Friday night, I'm in terrible pain. I didn't wake my wife up. I'm going downstairs to lay on the couch. And I said, if the pain is still there, if it has not relented at all, I'm going to tell her, call 911 and go into the hospital. But it didn't happen. I went down to lay down and, um, you know, I, I get emotional when I share that point because I still live the moment of the tearing of the body, the, the feeling of the chest caving in, the, the moment that life, that mortal life ends, that split second. So uh, that's a bump for me. I have to get over that one. So it happened and my spirit just left my body. My spirit actually, uh, it stepped out of my body like I'm getting up from a night's sleep. Just what stepped to out. All the pain you had gone. Everything was gone. I, I rose to the top of the to the living room where I was. My body was lying in the spiritual realm, lying on a horizontal position. There was an angel there that was waiting for me. But as I'm in the in the spiritual realm, I'm looking down at my body, lying lifeless on the couch. I saw uh, instantly in a moment of time. Um, prophetically, my wife and children around the kitchen table planning my funeral mm. in absolute sorrow and devastation. And it was in that split second I felt a heaviness. Um, but the angel was there over my body that I, it was the strangest feeling that has taken me some time to understand the purpose of why I do what I do today now, the message. Let, let me take you to heaven because yeah. I'm told it's a no time zone. That's why when God sees something that's going to happen and his prophets recorded in the Bible or say it, uh, there's no guesswork. He's seen it already happen. What's it like to live in a no time zone? Um, it impacted me when I came back to such a degree, and I'll go back to that, that All ever right. since I no longer wear a watch, I wear a compass on my wrist. Well, because how do you make your appointments? I don't care. I'm, I'm here. I care to be here on time with you. Of course. But I live in the moment. I live in a rhythm. I, I, I know, I've learned how to tell time by the position of the sun. You I'm, really don't I'm, wear, str I'm, you I'm don't strange. Really don't I know. Wear. It drives my wife crazy. You really don't wear a watch. No, I don't care about time. I'm untethered to this world. It doesn't matter. I've learned to follow a rhythm. The Moedim, the Jewish feast, the whole system in the Bible is all about a rhythm of life. We go from season to season. I love it. Um, it, it kind of made me uncomfortable coming here in the airport because everything is structured in time. <laughs> uh, when you came so, back anyway, from heaven, yeah. you went to what's called the second heaven. I where did. I the did. third heaven is where God and the angels are. Second heaven is the devil and demons. Yep. And the thought that you left with had to do with the power of the blood and authority. The teaching that I came back with that has turned everything on my head. I've known the Lord for 46 years 
and I've, I've been inundated with the power of the devil and demons, for believe it. And I was over the second heaven looking down into this cavern, this space, almost probably into the darkness of hell and the upper chambers of hell, perhaps. And these demons were there, and two in particular, one in particular, but there was another one, was trying to crawl up out of this catacomb <laughs> to grab a hold of my ankles. But it couldn't. And he kept trying. And he was pitiful. And I will say that the Lord showed me these demons that were originally fallen angels, they live in a, in a continuous progressive decay. Hmm. We go as believers, we go from glory to glory and beauty to beauty. They live in absolute decay and they were hard looking. And the reason they could not touch me as much as they tried, I was covered by the blood the blood border, the blood border, could I, not, they could not touch me. I hope you got that. He recognized how much power that God has given the least believer, the least believer. The least. And, yeah. and you know what? When you realize that, you can have a little heaven on earth. Do you know why? You give the devil too much credit. What? The rabbi experienced in heaven was amazing, but how it changed him when he returned to earth, like his supernatural gift of compassion makes him one of the most dangerous men on earth to evil spirits and sickness. Now he wants to impart this same compassion to you. Be right back. Right back to It's Supernatural. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Rabbi Felix Halpern's brand new book, Dancing Past the Darkness, The Glory Mindset, and also receive his new devotional book, Living with Heaven's Glory Mindset, 31 Days of Kingdom Glory. Plus, you'll get his new exclusive two-part audio CD set, Adventures in the Secret Place, and get a special bonus CD, Replacing Replacement Theology, all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9871. With Rabbi Halpern's brand new book, Dancing Past the Darkness, you will learn the five steps to detachment from the world so that you have more freedom in God and live a glory-driven life in turbulent times. Live life as a dance and have glory eyes that will let you see through the present darkness in this age. Receive third heaven revelation and discover your full authority to break the devil's power over your life. Operate in the glory way with a glory mindset and in glory authority. Do you have the courage to go on this 31-day adventure to change your life? Rabbi Felix Alpern says yes with his brand new devotional book, Living with Heaven's Glory Mindset, 31 Days of Kingdom Glory. Grow in God with this step-by-step 31-day -step devotional featuring a daily theme, a prayer, an action point, and a space for journal entry for each day. With Rabbi Felix Alpern's two CD audio set, Adventures in the Secret Place, and the Replacing Replacement Theology Extra Bonus CD, you will become less attached to the world and more attached to the heavenly mindset when you learn to operate from out of the secret place. Combat the resurging evil of anti-Semitism in America and around the world as Rabbi Felix exposes the imminent dangers found in replacement theology. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to get Rabbi Felix Alpern's new book, Dancing Past the Darkness, The Glory Mindset, and also receive his new devotional book, Living with Heaven's Glory Mindset, 31 Days of Kingdom Glory. Plus, you'll get his new exclusive two-part audio CD set, Adventures in the Secret Place, and get this special bonus CD, Replacing Replacement Theology, all yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9871 or send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9871. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, Rabbi Felix, you're from Jersey, not from Texas. Why are you wearing boots? When I came back from the second heaven and I saw the powerless, powerlessness, the impotence of the devil and his demons, 
I wear these boots, these uh, snake boots, python boots, when I'm only out for assignments and spiritual reasons to remind me, not me, remind people that the devil is under my feet and I happen to take the devil and make boots out of him. Hey, I, I hope you, you didn't miss that last line. He likes the idea of making boots out of the devil. <laughs> because he's always <laughs> under my feet. Uh, tell me, because I knew you before you went to heaven. I'm and sorry I've to say that. I've known you many years. <laughs> No, you're a good guy, but nothing like what you came back. No, no. Um, and tell me about, as I read the New Testament, I see when there were great miracles by our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, uh, he had, it says he had compassion. Tell me how this compassion operates in you now. My heart breaks for, for the lost. I don't win the loss because it's the thing to do or it's a mission or I know it's a responsibility. Yes, all those things somewhat are true. Um, but in the face of a person in need, I weep, I break. I feel the compassion of my Father for them. I felt the compassion of Jesus, Yeshua, before he ministered to people, whether the person needs healing. I feel the weight of sadness and, and not and not human sadness, not not a human mercy. It, it's a God given love and compassion for people to come into the power of God and come into the healing. It's driven by that supernatural love. Now, when this compassion is released, there are so many healings that occur. I mean, major, major healings. We just have time for one. Tell me one. Um, I, I was at a place and I prayed for um, a man to see and I continued to, I was weeping for that individual and laid my hands on that individual and began to proclaim sight in that individual and began to proclaim sight into that individual and proclaim sight into that individual until those eyes began to see and miracles begin, miracles are happening because as you mentioned, what we've seen in the Brit Hadashah, we say the New Testament, right? The Jewish New Testament. This was commonplace and miracles have never ended, regardless of what teachings try to dissuade us from believing once again that God is the God of the impossible, that he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And since we have not reached forever, we're in today, he's the same. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. Tell us just a few, we only can cover a few nuggets of your brand new book, Dancing Past the Darkness, some things you've learned. Uh, I've learned, Dancing Past the Darkness was uh, my story of living three days as one who has been in heaven and has returned. And I'm walking on this, in this world, quite frankly, I see things objectively, I'm unattached. I see things, I feel like I'm a pilgrim or I'm a visitor, I'm a visitor. And I'm on the outside and I observe and I'm more of an observer today. I can see people's eyes and I can look into their soul. The Lord shows me the condition of their soul, not me, it's him that does that. So I'm able to pray for them, I'm able to be used of the Lord in that. The dancing past the darkness is learning to dance through life uh, because we have complicated the glory, Sid. We complicate everything. And I can say one amongst many is the glory is, is something that it wants some elbow room to every believer everywhere who is a born again, spiritual believer, the glory wants to move through them. But it also, uh, out of my time in heaven in the first three months, uh, the Lord taught me about detachment. Now the Lord said, to me when I came back that this will either be transformational or transactional. He said, if it's transactional, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to bask in it. But a year from now, it will be a past experience and that will be great. But if it's transformational, it will be a life change for you. This will be the beginning of a new calling for your life. And it will be something that you will have to pay a price for. And I have. And part of that price is disengagement, is a sense of detachment. 
being able to walk with objectivity, being able to realize at any moment, no, no matter where I am with my wife, and she's, uh, I, I love you, Bonnie, greatly, <laughs> adjusting. Because I live with a, a reserved parking spot every day, wherever I am, for the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to come in and say, stop what you're doing, go over here. Driving down the road, go into that parking lot. Uh, you're at the store, stop what you're doing. There's a man over there that needs prayer. There's a woman over there that needs encouragement. Every day is a day where the Spirit of God is moving. What did you learn about God's sovereignty? It's the absolute drawing power of every step of my life. It's the absolute, it's like the magnetism, the natural magnetism. I'm drawn uh, by like gravity to every day what God wants me to do. It's a pull. It's a pull. Uh, that, and everything uh, that, has a purpose. I'll tell you what, there are so many nuggets he learned in heaven that are so life-changing. The only way you're going to get all of this is in his book. I can't wait till you start dancing past the darkness. Uh, no more than a minute. What did God show you about the Jewish New Year, which began the end of September of 2022 and the next year? That this year was going to be a year of exposure, exposing things, and a time of anomalies, things unheard of. I saw seven mountains and seven disorders. I felt the Lord say that my people have become so desensitized to disorder that they cannot even distinguish order from disorder. And I'm going to show them so much disorder that they're going to have to make a choice to leave where they have to start looking in the right places because the glory is coming, the glory is falling, the glory is here. But people are looking in, looking in the wrong places, they're hearing the wrong things. They're, they're, they're like passing the bush and not seeing the fire. Rabbi Felix, I want you to pray for an impartation of the compassion of heaven right now. I want to ask every person that is listening to this program in this time, in this very moment, uh, to put your hand upon your heart and close your eyes. I want to ask you to say, Jesus Yeshua, would you fill me with your compassion? Fill me with your compassion. That you would displace that you would just displace human compassion. Just human compassion. With supernatural God-given compassion. With supernatural. That compassion. you would allow my life. That you would allow my life to be activated. To be activated by your spirit. By your spirit. Uh, by your love, by your love, by your power, by your power, that you would use my life, that you would use my for your glory and honor, for your glory and honor. And if you're listening, and you want this, but you do not know the Lord, you do not know Messiah. Uh, you may be Jewish and you've been raised Jewish and you don't know any different. I want to ask you to say this prayer, dear Yeshua. In the name of the God of Abraham, God of Abraham, Isaac, in and the Jacob. Name of Abraham, Isaac, and Isaac Jacob. and Jacob, I ask that you would come into my life. I ask that you would come into my life. That you would complete my life. That you would complete my life. That you would fulfill my life. That you would fulfill my life. And that you would make me a child of God. And that you would make me a child of God. In the name of Yeshua, we in pray. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Amen.